We're talking today to HBK from Hairball. Hairball is going to be having a big, they got shows already coming up in 2021. It's good to look ahead to when, it, by all accounts, it looks as though we're actually going to be able to have like a lot of live music coming at some point down the road. There's reason to be optimistic, and, and Hairball will be part of this. This is good to hear. You guys have got shows already lined up. Um, beginning as early as, if I'm looking at your at the website, hairballonline.com, you guys have shows as early as the end of February? I believe that is correct. Yes, and let's. Uh, I'm. Uh, yeah, I'm holding out hope, like everybody else is. is there... we can, uh, you know, that we can get out there and start rocking in 2021 as early as we can. That that's that. It's going to come at some point. It's going to be awesome when it happens. You've been in the band since what 2019. So what? We're pushing two years now. About a year and a half or so of you being in the yep. band. Yep, yeah, it was early 2019 when I joined. Okay, so that means one of your first shows was right around here in the Eau Claire area, uh, the Northern Wisconsin State Fair. I mean, one of the first shows, relatively speaking, yeah. but the Northern yep. Wisconsin State Fair in Chippewa Falls. And I I had not been, I have not yet been to a hairball show, but I've heard about the hairball shows at the Northern Wisconsin State Fair. And quite honestly, I'd been, okay, hairball, what's, I, I had not really heard about it. Then I heard about the reaction, like, my God. Gosh, they brought in a crowd. And I heard very, very good. Seriously, I'm not just saying this because it's the interview. I heard very good things about about the band. First off, what did you think about the crowd? If you, if you can remember that show among all the other ones, do you have any particular memories of that of that show in Chippewa Falls? I do because I didn't realize that I didn't realize that there was a Northern Wisconsin State Fair, <laughs> and so growing up. Uh, you know, growing up kind of next door in Minnesota, you know, um, I thought I had known about, you know, most of the most of the things going on music wise in Wisconsin. And so I had never heard of that. And then when we got there, you know, uh, in true Wisconsin fashion, it was a party. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, Wisconsin knows knows how to have a good time and knows how to rock and roll and has always, uh, I think, shown Hairball a ton of love. And they certainly have since I have been in, you know, Hairball. So it's been great. It's always fun to get to Wisconsin. Um, we got to play there uh, this summer. We played an outdoor set in Somerset um, toward the end of summer. And, and you know, that was just amazing and really reminded us all about how lucky we are to get to do what it is that we do and that's play rock and roll you get to play music for a living that that is something that probably anyone listening to my radio station is myself included like we're 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 envious of that not jealous we're envious of that we wish we had the opportunity to do what you guys get to do and just go out and play music all the time and play really cool songs by doing that too yes absolutely it's a it is as much fun for us as it is you guys. I mean, it's it, it uh, to go to the show and to get to see the fans and to feel that energy is, uh, uh, you know, I mean, that's an amazing thing. What song did you most look forward to learning when you joined the band? Uh, without a doubt, that would be Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> I mean, it's epic. You yes. know, and I, uh, I was a Queen fan since you know the late seventies. Was a fan of the song before Wayne's World, right? And <laughs> and then when the movie came out, it just uh, brought such such attention to that song, and it became you know just such a a, a pop culture like you know. It, it, I mean, all of a sudden, you know, how many years later, all of a sudden that song was everywhere, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and it's truly an epic song. I mean, it's six, seven minutes long and, you know, there's every different kind of music. But I mean, there's sweet, nice piano lines and then you get this big operatic thing and then the end is just balls to the wall rock and roll and 
you know, so that was a big, it was a big undertaking, but I was excited to get to actually play that song live is, 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 is truly, <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> oh boy. That, 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 considering it's Bohemian Rhapsody as well, which is always a bit of a, it, it, it's uh, interesting to see how Queen approaches that and how others have approached that over the years. I mean, even when Freddie was, Mercury was still alive, how they approached doing that live. Cause I mean, there's so many parts to it. It's almost a studio song, yet it's still a song and it's still performable live. How close do you guys, and, and I'll expand this out beyond just Bohemian Rhapsody, how close do you hew to the parts for accuracy in like the real subtle parts? How, how much do you, do you make a point to recreate? How, what, what's, what's the, the level there with, with the band and yourself? We always, as, as close as humanly possible, because, um, you know, so for us and what we do, as a as a tribute, as a review of these songs, um, of these artists, you know, we have to recreate them down to every minute detail that we possibly can. You know, I mean, if you're if you are the original artist, you almost have more creative license, you know, to go. Well, you know, I've played this song for thirty years. You know, I mean, if Aerosmith comes out and does Dream On, right? They've been playing that song for forty plus years the same way and they can go you know we've played it for 40 years we want to do it now or, or it's changed over time well when people come to see us if we do dream on and when we do do dream on you know we've got to nail it how how you remember hearing it you know in the you know on your stereo when you were a teenager because that's how you remember it right and so we've got to come as close as we can and that's uh, in your ears and with your eyes down to every detail, mannerism. And that's why, you know, I mean, the guys who sing uh, for the band, I mean, spend hours and hours, you know. So the voice, the look, the mannerism, the costumes, the everything is just down to an amazing level of accuracy i presume so oh yeah go ahead no no, i was just gonna say it's um you know there are times where i will stand in the uh, dressing room and i will look look over and i'll go holy crap (laughs) (laughs) you know jeez look at him (laughs) wow you know it's amazing it's uh it is an amazing thing and that's you know but I think that's the, you know, that's the standard that we have to hold ourselves to, right? Because we're not coming in to your local club and playing for free or, you know what I mean? I mean, right. we're asking people to pay a pretty decent amount to come see us in a large place where we bring in a semi truck plus full of stuff, you know, staging and pyro and fire and smoke and and video screens and and all kinds of stuff you know everything that you would expect out of an 80s you know uh arena rock show and bringing it into you know small arenas and large halls and all of these places and um you know so we have to do those things because that is what expected and as we come around because we're always on the road, well, usually anyway, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, you know, to get you to come over and over and over again, we always have to keep reinventing the show and adding new things and adding new s- stage things and effects and, and songs and characters and artists and always, always be reinventing the show, always adding to it, always changing it up so that when we come around again in a year or however long it is that you go, Ooh, we got to go because it was different the last time I saw them from the previous time. And so we got to go see what they're going to do next. And, uh, you know, it's an amazing show. It's, it is, uh, it is really a highlight reel, if you will, because we're going to pack in, 
you know, a dozen, a dozen or so artists every show, a dozen different characters that you're going to see. And so even if for some reason, you know, you don't like Kiss, let's just say, I don't know why you wouldn't, but, you know, <laughs> let's just say you don't like Kiss, right? Yeah. You're weird. But <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. In a couple songs, it's going to be Queen. And then it's going to be Aerosmith, or it's going to be Bon Jovi and Guns N' Roses and Motley Crue and, you know, Ozzy or Van Halen. And, you know, so it's always changing up. And it, and that's what's great about the Hairball Show is that, you know, every few minutes it's going to change. And now you're going to see the greatest hit or two or three from another timeless artist, you know, I mean, because you're going to jump from, you know, Van Halen to Def Leppard into, into, um, you know, into ACDC, into Queen, into Journey, into, I mean, it just goes from one to another, to another, to another. And it's, you know, a two hour, you know, highlight reel. Mm-hmm. And so you mentioned anyway, you, <laughs> that's okay. You mentioned Van Halen and I, I'm, I'm guessing, but I have to imagine upon the, the word of Eddie Van Halen's passing, you guys are probably thinking, well, I mean, in addition to, yeah, just what you said right there, the re- the initial reaction. And then there's also your gig and thinking, okay, wh- what does that mean going forward for a band that does include Van Halen? Uh, what, uh, what, what, if you can reveal anything, is there, is it going to be some ag- different acknowledgement of Van Halen enhanced, whatever that is? Going at least forward for this this year, what can you comment on Van Halen wise with regard to Hairball? Well, I mean, you know, we've seen it um, and we see it more and more. You know, I mean, and and over time, unfortunately, we'll see. You know, we'll lose more and more of these classic rock artists. Um, but you know, he really holds. Uh, in even higher, uh, um, you know, place. I mean, he, re- he changed the way that the guitar is played in rock and roll, right? Mm-hmm. And so of everybody that we've lost in recent years, you know, that, you know, that was a huge one. And, and we've all talked about it amongst ourselves in the band and like, oh my gosh, I mean, I don't think any of us were shocked. I mean, we all knew that his health was not great, but you know, still when it finally hits and it finally happens, you're like, Oh, geez, finally, you know, you know, here it is. Reality hits you in the face. You know, um, I would not be surprised at all to see some kind of extra, you know, tribute done, um, or at least acknowledgement, to him uh, in the show. Um, a couple of different things have been talked about. You know, years ago, I know, um, Hairball did uh, a series of shows where we kind of honored a certain, you know, artist and did like an extended set uh, of them. It wouldn't shock me to see that kind of come back around, at least in terms of Van Halen. Again, they they really set the stage and, and really set the template up where the prototype, you know, for, for what we kind of bring to the stage and, and what most of the artists throughout the eighties brought. I mean, they were really the prototype, uh, you know, good time rock and roll arena, gigantic show. I mean, just, everything that they did was what everybody after them Mm -hmm. (laughs) used as like, okay, well we need that kind of a singer out front and we need a great guitar player. We need a gigantic stage show and a drummer with a ginormous drum set. (laughs) And you know, that's, 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 I mean, right on 
down the line. I mean, they they really set the standard, you know, for for what a what an arena rock show and what an arena rock show act does. I mean, they were, I mean, they were everything. Uh huh. Another kind of good time rock band that has been in the news, but thankfully for new music is ACDC. Their new album out came one debuted at number one. Um, oh. I know what, yeah, they're ACDC ruling again and hearing that again, I it was like, it does, nothing ever changes. That's awesome. And including the music, I, I mean, my personal thought was, wow, the first time I heard this, the shot in the dark, as soon as that song came out, my take was, ah, yes, ACDC, it did it's nothing different. They're, they're, they're their own. What do you guys think? Of course you include ACDC in your shows. I know you have, what do you guys think of the new ACDC music? I'm amazed. Uh, I actually talked with uh, with one of the other guys in the band uh, right after that was released, and we're like, "God, they did it again!" <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's hard, right? Because so many acts feel the need to, you know, reinvent themselves or follow trends, and they've changed over the years, and that's great. Um, ACDC is the example of the opposite. Here's a band who has stuck to their stuck to their roots, stuck to their game, stuck to what they do the best, and continue. I mean, I heard "Shot in the Dark," and I'm like, could have been on for those about to rock. Mm-hmm. Could have been on Back in Black. Could have been on any of those other records. It's just as good. It sounds. I mean, you instantly go, "Yep, it's ACDC." <laughs> I mean. It's recognizable. You know who it is. It's great. It's and it's amazing that they can continue to put out great music that is instantly recognizable. Of yep, it's them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, yeah. I mean, they break all of those other rules that everyone was. Well, you always have to be evolving, and you got to reinvent yourself, and you can't keep doing the same thing because nobody will, you know. Uh, yeah, everybody wants to hear that same thing <laughs> because it's ACDC. Right. It's almost like comfort food in, in, in a way. Like you feel better because they're still doing that in, in it's, its own like way. It's like going to McDonald's in Tokyo. Yep. Yep. I know what I'm going to get. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's ACDC. Exactly. I know it. I love it. And it's going to be the same. Mm, always tastes good. That's true. <laughs> Last question for you. It has to do with Christmas. If hairball were to do a Christmas show, or let's even say a Christmas album, what songs would you guys want to arrange to put on, to do a hairball Christmas? Ooh, boy. Uh, boy, that's a out of left field question. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, I mean, I think stuff like Run Run Rudolph always, uh, you know, I mean, uh, songs like that. I just actually uh, recently heard uh, the Skid Row version of Jingle Bells. Um, I think there are several songs that kind of lend themselves to to rock music and have been done uh, previously from other artists. Um, you know, so there's all of those, I think. Um, you know, the Eagles... Uh, Eagles uh, Springsteen has done some great Christmas stuff. Um, so I would probably start there. You know, I mean, obviously you've got things like the Trans Siberian Orchestra mm-hmm. who have taken Christmas and arena rock and, you know, clumped it all together and have, and, uh, and do amazing things, you know? So there's, there's, certainly a lot to be taken from uh to do but i would probably start there i like the classics you know i would probably start with run run rudolph can't really go wrong with that one i mean go if you bring in chuck yeah you bring in chuck berry that's a core of rock i think yeah exactly that can that can t- handle on any stage. I know you guys could do it. Well, who knows? We'll see you down the road at some point, especially if we, whenever we get December shows again. Who knows? Maybe maybe that's something to look forward to. We got next year though. 
Your show's coming Maybe up next. December 2021. December 2021. <laughs> book it right there. <laughs> but all right. So, Hairball, again, tour dates to come beginning in late February. As of now, there's more to come. Hairballonline.com to look at, at all of the schedule and buy your tickets and learn more. HBK, thank you so much for taking some time to uh, chat with us today about all things Hairball and have a Merry Christmas and have a Happy New Year. Anytime I enjoyed it. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas to all of you. And, uh, 